Hello guys, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Amir Ivani and I'm a first year medical student of the Aga Khan Medical College. And I am joined today with my friend, Umar Tariq. He's also a first year medical student. And today uh, it's my first solo video without my brother Rafi. And I'm sure you're really familiar with this space, but you're gonna have to bear with me today. And I'm gonna be talking about the Aga Khan entry test, the AKU Medical College entry test for the MBBS program. Uh, yeah, so let's start with the test pattern. The test constitutes of 20 by, what was it? Uh, the, it constitutes of two parts basically. Yep. One is the science segment and then there's the reasoning segment. The science segment has three uh, separate segments that consist of biology, chemistry and physics. Each of those have 20 questions. Yep. So that's 20 plus 20 plus 20. And then the scientific reasoning and the mathematical reasoning has 30 MCQs each. Science reasoning has negative mark. For every wrong answer, you get 0.25 marks cut. Okay? And for the other section, SR and the scientific reasoning and the mathematical reasoning, there is no negative mark. The total duration for the time for the test is two and a half hours. And that's about it for the test pattern. And yes, one more thing. You can do this, you can attempt the whole paper in any order you want. So you're gonna be given the whole test together and you attempt it however you want it. And yeah, let's move on to the next part. So we're both from A-level backgrounds. I did my A-level from the Karachi Grammar School and... Um, I was from Generation School. Yeah, so we, I did my A-level back in 2018. I took a gap year and I got into APU. And the first thing I thought we should discuss is how much of the entry test constitute of A-level knowledge. Um, Roughly, like, I thought it was 40%. I guess 30, 30, to, 30 to 40 percent because you have to know the basics of what was going on in the test, what you did in A-levels because if you did not know that then um, the, you cannot build on the concepts in the inter-syllabus because the concepts at the base were the same, yeah. it was just the things that were more at the superficial level that were changed. In it. Yeah, so like I, I, I tell everyone, uh, those who message us on Instagram, follow us, uh, they DM us asking, us asking us about A-level intro and all of that and I tell them that with your metric knowledge, with your metric and whole level knowledge, you can easily solve at least 10 to 20% of the paper, roughly, on the minimum. So maybe it's an over assumption, but if your concepts, your A level and your O level concepts clear, you can easily do 40% of the page. Uh, let's discuss about tuitions. Did you take tuitions for it? Well, I did take an admission at a place, but I didn't really go because I didn't really think that it was uh, doing me enough benefit as uh, me studying at home would do. Exactly. So, like I said, I took a gap year, and in my first attempt, I did attend a coaching center that too for a week or two, and I decided to leave it because it was exhausting, and it was brain draining so I thought it was quite useless and I didn't do it and even in my second attempt I did I opted not to take uh, coaching external help and yeah third part. It, it takes like a lot of time exactly. the classes continue for the whole day and then you basically are so drained that you don't have time to study anything else and especially now with lockdown I think all of these coaching centers are taking online coaching over zoom and Honestly, if you're going to do Zoom classes, why not just go to YouTube and Google whatever help you need and so that's uh, pretty much it. And Coming to the books? Yeah, coming to the books. Uh, I'd say the most important thing for an A-level student after having the basic A-level knowledge is to at least be aware of what the uh, federal board syllabus is. Yeah. Like you need to go through the syllabus for all three sciences and like you have to know about it. And other than that, then there is also... Um, yeah, like... What I did, I studied SAT, SAT, SAT 2s. So I covered the SAT 2 parents, uh, subject-wise biochem physics, and I found it, like, obviously it was my second attempt, but then at the same time, I felt, uh, having studied inter previously, I felt SAT 2 was just as sufficient, maybe, and although, like, I studied SAT 2, I supplemented it with my uh, inter textbooks and more textbooks, and that was more than enough uh, for me. So we were discussing about books and uh, with in regards to books, I use my SAT's parents, which were more than enough for me. I attempted various MCQ uh, papers available online. I have numerous compilation of uh, inter uh, MCQs. 
And one thing I want to add over here is if you find uh, various sellers selling AKU pass papers online on Instagram, on Facebook, or in your local bazaar, they are more than like they're fake because AKU does not release pass papers. The only sample paper you have is available on their website, so you can check that out. And uh, if you want to add that, on, I think for an A level student, it's essential to be uh, at least aware of the federal board syllabus, yep. which can be found on the AKU website again. And they should know what are the things that they need to build up more on that were not covered in A level specifically, because those things tend to be asked quite a bit. Yeah. So I think you need to be aware of the federal board knowledge as well. Yeah. So what I did, uh, like Omar said, I printed the uh, syllabus, AQ syllabus, all three subjects, and I highlighted the topics that I already knew from my prior knowledge, and then. Uh, all the unlighted things, I would go through the textbook, I would use the internet, I would go through intertextbook, sat textbook, and then I would eventually highlight the whole thing. So if you see the syllabus I have at home, it's all highlighted because I eventually covered everything. So that's about it. Now, uh, let's talk about, let's go a little bit more into details uh, okay. subject-wise. So, so let's start with biology. biology. So what do you think about biology? I think when people see the federal board syllabus for the first time, they see all the kingdoms and the classification stuff, taxonomy. and that's like taxonomy is the real headache. Um, you don't need to ratify every single thing, but you, I guess, you need to know about the basic main branches of the different kingdoms and stuff. Exactly. And one thing I can add is, eventually, no matter what, even if you get into AKU, you have to take your MCAT. So, MCAT has all of that okay guys uh, one thing I want to add to that is how you eventually have to take your inter your MCAT wherever province you're from you're gonna have to take the MCAT and in the MCAT you have to study taxonomy so it's usually a smart idea to study it for the APU and then that could uh, help you preparing for your MCAT considering the amount of time you have right now the test is on the 6th of September you have more than enough time to um, remember it. And that's the biggest tip I could say in biology. Yeah. Let's move on to chemistry. Chemistry, chemistry organic. Organic. <laughs> <laughs> organic, people find it hard. I found it all right. Uh, there's inorganic. I found inorganic a lot harder. There's a lot more temperature, pressures, all of that you remember. And, and there are also some uh, topics in physical chemistry that we don't really cover in A-levels. Yeah. So those are some new things that we need to know. Yeah. So once again, your SAT 2 books, supplement it with your intermediate books. And then worst case scenario, I mean, supplement it with Google, I say. And wherever you think you need more information, supplement it with your intermediate books. Because come on, Google has a lot more information than you would ever need. So that's about it for chemistry. Do you have anything to add? Not add? really. And for physics, yeah, numerical. Yes. People mm -hmm. don't like physics. People are like there are people who do excellent in bio and chem and end up failing in physics physics is something uh you're gonna have to remember the formulas you're gonna have to remember constant you're gonna have to remember the trigonometric values it's unfortunately that's the way it is so there are numerous ways you can remember these values you could uh find youtube videos tutorials on how to remember them they're pretty easy um, once you get a hang of it you're gonna find it easy yeah so Omar, anything you want to add not really physics and the last thing mathematical reasoning and scientific reasoning mathematical reasoning it's uh once i forgot to mention in the beginning the whole aku paper you're not allowed to use the uh, calculator so it's all mental math you have to be quick with your calculation so if they're asking you to arrange some numbers in ascending order or in descending orders if they're asking you to find the perimeter the area of something, the volume of something, you're going to have to do it all in your head. So be sure to remember the formulas, um, basic tricks and like shortcuts, I guess. And yeah, if, if you've done your O-level math, that's more than enough. If you've done your A-level math, I'd say you don't even have to study for it. Um, metric math, it's basically metric O-level yeah. level math but like for people who haven't studied math for the last two years i'd suggest that you get yourself informed because you might have lost track with your um, calculations and quick uh, quick calculations basically yeah. so and since there's a shortage of time so you exactly. need to be quick in your calculations so just practice practice through sat through kangaroo math con 
contest papers and other such resources that you could find online and stuff. There's numerous quizzes on uh, Khan Academy, practice papers you can do, uh, SAT 1 math. And that's, in my opinion and everyone's opinion, it's more than enough. Math is quite easy and uh, for many, obviously people feel that. And the next portion is scientific reasoning. Uh, scientific reasoning is, uh, we get a lot of questions about it. And the thing with it is, there is no, there is no pattern, yeah. there is no paper, there is no um, anything we can refer to. Uh, primarily because I think it, I think they're made within the institute. I mean, yeah, they, they basically, I guess they just test your analytical skills in yeah. that and how much, how good your concepts are yeah. for the, yeah, for the subjects. So it's not a hundred percent scientific per se. Although the word science is in the word, um, it's more critical thinking. So if you've done Kangaroo uh, question papers, I don't know if you know about that, Google it. Kangaroo uh, papers, they're pretty much like that. They test your general knowledge, they test critical thinking, they test uh, questions like fencing, if you if you were to fence an area, if, if something is going in that direction. Basic things, something I would think many could solve. And yeah, it's, it's, I found it quite enjoyable and once again, uh, I don't think we mentioned in the beginning of this video, but mathematical reasoning and scientific reasoning, uh, you have to pass it separately and then the three sciences, you have to pass it separately. And the threshold for passing varies year to year. So last year, I think the passing was roughly for the science was in the upper 60s. And for the scientific reasoning, the math was in the lower 60s. It was about that. It's it's between the... It's around 60s to 70s. Exactly. So it's about that. So it's not pretty high. It's not pretty low. So if, if you practice it over and over again, you're going to get a hang of it. And at this point, one final tip I would say is uh, you have plenty of time. You have the whole of July, the whole of August. And six days of September. You have two months. Two months to study for the AKU test. Um, we had what? We had like barely like around 15 days in which yes, there was also the days. ETH break in between. I had two days because I had, uh, I took accelerated uh, A-levels in my repeat here. So I had two days after my last MCQs to prep for it. So people manage obviously, but this year, uh, a word of caution, uh, considering everyone has the same amount of time as you have, Everyone is preparing just as much as you are. Everyone has just as much information going into their head. So what that could mean is the threshold could go high. People could ace the paper. You never know. So you just have to be prepared about it. And I'm sure we warned all of you on our Instagram stories. We've been telling you ever since the announcement was made to start prepping from now. There is no disadvantage starting early. And there is, I mean, there is no disadvantage. It's only plus plus. So if you start early, if you, um, it's eventually going to help you in your AKU test as well as your MCAT test because well, you they're both quite co quite close together this year. Yep. Um, we had a lot of time between the two tests. Exactly. So due to the delay, the pandemic going on, I have a gut feeling that maybe the uh, MCAT would go right after the AKU test. You never know. But once again, you have to be prepared. The MCAT will most likely take place. Um, whatever the condition is, AKU test is most likely going to take place. I mean, the date is given out, so start preparing from now. It's it's for your advantage. Yeah. And any last marks? Any anything you want to tell them? All the best, guys. Yeah. And yeah, just take it easy. It's not a hard paper. It's it is a hard paper, obviously. <laughs> the camera man, the camera woman is smiling behind the camera, but it is a hard paper. But if you take it with a cool mind, because in my opinion, everyone goes there prepared, okay? Nobody goes there with a blank mind. So if you uh, go there with a good mind, have your breakfast in the morning, don't study the day before, drink plenty of water, you're gonna go there with a good vibe, you're gonna ace the paper eventually. So yeah, just stay positive about it. Don't feel too bad. I know the pandemic can be depressing, hang out with your friends, have a Zoom call, have a Zoom party, uh, enjoy your time, uh, use the virtual setup, and yeah, just enjoy your time studying. 
that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, and excuse the noise, uh, we're sitting outside. We got kicked out of the uni for filming. So yeah, excuse the noise if the voice isn't clear. And yeah, good luck. Good luck.